Dawn breaks over Beirut. With it, the first light many will see today. For months now, much of Lebanon has been without power overnight. But day brings only a little respite. In the suburbs, Raide al Bitar is preparing for another day of organizing her life around her chores. Right now, we don't have electricity. The electricity that we have from the private generators is not enough for uh, the, uh, the elevator. And how much government electricity are you getting every day at the moment? Maybe one or two hours. Lebanon hasn't had reliable national electricity for decades. But this summer, the usual few hours of outages per day have soared to more than 20. The only other option, for those who can afford it, is pricey private generators. This month, we have been asked for 3 million liras. 3 million liras is, um, is more than what I get paid per month. But now, even those are failing thanks to a dire diesel shortage, leaving people without any power at all for up to 12 hours a day, as temperatures soar. On the highway nearby, Raida's husband, Samer, is facing another exhausting new Lebanese ritual, hunting for gas. Our all plans are based on uh, the availability of the fuel. Look at this. This is Hipco station for filling fuel. It's, uh, it's line about uh, 30 cars. For weeks now, Lebanon's fuel pumps have been running on almost empty. The country doesn't have an official public transport system, and the unofficial system is made up of minivans and cars, which need petrol too. If you want to live your daily life, get around, get to work, your only option is to sit in the sweltering heat and wait. And the government has scrapped fuel subsidies, making scarce fuel increasingly unaffordable too. As tensions rise, fights are breaking out at gas stations across the country, and many have closed altogether. He says he's been here for four hours waiting for petrol today. Because Samir and Raida work in different areas, they can't share a car. So she has to endure the same process. And when she gets to work, she's just stepping from a personal crisis into a public one. Raida is the head pharmacist at Lebanon's biggest public hospital, Rafik Hariri, in Beirut. As well as struggling to keep the hospital and its life-saving equipment running with so little power, they're constantly short of vital medications. A lot of these shelves are empty. What are you missing at the moment? I'm, I am missing a lot, most of the time, the antibiotics. The cupboards are bare. They've struggled to get the drugs they need since the economy took a nosedive two years ago. But now, the shortages aren't just threatening lives, they're taking them. Raida's own family has suffered. Her brother-in-law recently died needlessly. He didn't find his medication for two, three days. He thought it was okay, it's just a hypertension medication. He thought that he can, he can manage for a few days without it. But what actually happened is that he had a brain hemorrhage and uh, later on he died for a medication that cost like 15,000. Less than a dollar. Yes, that shouldn't happen. That shouldn't, that, that's not supposed to happen. It's the same situation across the country. Pharmacies are closing their doors and social media is flooded with desperate messages searching for life-saving drugs. How long can the medical system here survive like this? Actually, it's falling day by day. I can only imagine how many people have gone through that. How many people, they don't have voices to be heard. Nobody can tell their story, and they just die. Private businesses aren't faring much better, including Raed's father Ismail's fabric import company, which has sustained the Albitar family for decades. Ismail has worked all his life to support his four children, put them through university, and give them a comfortable life. He hoped to retire and spend his remaining days relaxing with his grandchildren. Now, the crisis has taken all that away even his savings are gone. I feel that my money has been stolen. Do you feel let down by your country? Yes. I feel that my country has betrayed me. I have no peace, no peace of mind, no peace of life. I feel like a person, like a prisoner who is uh, sentenced to death, and he is waiting death. Ismail isn't the only one who feels his money and his future have been stolen. Lebanon's currency has lost more than 90% of its value. One US dollar used to be 1,500 lira. It's now around 20,000. People's life savings stuck in the bank have been wiped out. And for those lucky enough to still have a job, the minimum wage is now worth less than $35 a month. After another fearful, draining shift at work, it's time for Raida to fight more fires at home. On the way, she has to tackle the grocery store. 
As always these days, she has no idea just what she'll be able to feed her family with the cash she has in her wallet. The average price of goods and services has quadrupled since June 2019, and basic essentials now cost seven times what they once did. This would now cost you two hours of work to buy this one can of corn. Yes. So now it's very usual for someone to be uh, at the cashier paying, and then he will return this one and return this one and return this one. Finally, she finds something that's affordable, a jar of mayonnaise. Back home, it's time to make dinner. But Aida does everything she can to still give seven-year-old Ahmad the food he likes. I'm going to cook this for today with some rice and some meat. That's all. I don't want to be a vegetarian. Because the meat is a lot more tasty. Samir is an accountant. Between them, he and Raida have nearly two decades of higher education and multiple degrees. They used to earn well. Now, their combined monthly salary is worth just $250. In 18 months, Raida and her family have gone from working hard to live a comfortable life to struggling each day just to make ends meet. Not in my scariest dreams ever that I have thought that everything is going to fall apart at once. The Albitars were one of thousands of families who took to the streets in October 2019 to call for a better future for Lebanon. Instead, they've been plunged into the abyss. We rose our flags and we were there and my child was there. We were... Uh, I, 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 I really, for a while, we believed that we were going to make a change. And then uh, we're, we're, all our dreams were crushed. Those days of hope are long gone. Almost every day, sporadic demonstrations break out as angry Lebanese light tires and dumpsters on fire and block roads to protest the dire conditions they face in every element of daily life. But few believe things will improve. Now, they're simply trying to survive. They don't know how long they can. People are walking around like zombies. The eyes are so desperate. For the first time in my life, I can understand why would someone go through a boat and throw himself and his children into the sea. Because he can, he can, he, he, he can hear his child crying of hunger. We have reached a hopeless end. And it's so hard for me to say hopeless, but it is hopeless.